Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Ah, the magic of the classic fairy tale. And how refreshing it can be when that magic is subverted. No, we're not talking about Shrek today, though we may do in some point in the future. Instead, today, we're talking about the classic European fairy tale, as referenced in today's subject, The Princess Bride. Released in 1987, The Princess Bride is a fantasy adventure from the hands of Rob Reiner and William Goldman. A kindly grandfather reads a fairy tale to his grandson. But this fairy tale is as grand an adventure as life itself. The Princess Bride was reviewed favourably by notable movie critics Siskel and Ebert, and holds a 97% rating today on Rotten Tomatoes. So then my friends, sit yourselves comfortably and let me spin you a tale. The Tale of the Princess Bride. Once upon a time in the land of Florin lived Buttercup and her farmhand Westley. They were in love. Sadly, young Westley was tragically killed at sea while trying to make his fortune so that he could return and they could wed. Or was he? Five years later, Buttercup was chosen to marry the Prince of the Realm. But one day, while riding a horse, she was kidnapped. Curiously, a mysterious boat followed the kidnappers as they made for the Cliffs of Insanity. And atop those cliffs, a mysterious masked man faced three trials. First, he dueled the Master Swordsman, Inigo Montoya. Naturally, you must expect me to attack with Capapero! Secondly, he wrestled the giant, Fezzik. And finally, he engaged the Sicilian, Vizzini, in a duel of wits. What in the world can that be? What? Where? <laughs> Aya Kane. Colourless, odourless, and among the deadlier poisons. However, it has been used recently as the base of a three-part compound that apparently does wonders for some strains of hepatitis. And who was this masked marvel? Only the dread pirate Roberts himself. Who was in fact, Westley. Now as you know, Westley sailed off to find his fortune. The rest of the story is that he was unfortunately captured by the dread pirate Roberts. But in a stroke of luck, Roberts took a liking to young Westley. And of course this Roberts was looking to retire anyway, so the mantle of dread pirate Roberts was passed to Westley, as it had been passed to the last fella, and possibly the fella before him. In fact we learn that the original dread pirate Roberts has been out of the game for 15 years. And I have heard tell that there's a Dread Pirate Roberts still, to this very day. Though rumours do say that he's moved online. Wonder if he was the guy that cracked the first 4K Blu-ray. But the Prince had tracked the kidnappers, and by extension, Westley. The only option was the Fire Swamp, which they braved with bravery. Only to be separated again by Prince Humperdinck of Florin. Prince Humperdinck swore that no harm would befall Westley. It was a condition of Westley's surrender, but the Prince was not a man of his word. In fact, it's only been very recently that royals have been men, and women, of their word anyway. His true plan was war. And so dawned the day of the wedding, where Fezzik and Inigo were reunited and they sought the man in black to help them assault the castle. But where was Wesley, the fabled man in black, at this time? The Pit of Despair, where Count Rugen kept a soul-leeching machine, which he used to conduct experiments in pain. But then, Prince Humperdinck, enraged by Buttercup's love for Wesley, set this soul-leeching machine to its highest setting, and so it would seem that Wesley was dead. But Wesley wasn't quite dead, 
for the power of love sustained him. And he was revived by a discounted miracle. And so our heroes set forth to storm the castle. But all too late, as the villain Humperdinck declared the union binding. Fate delivered Inigo Montoya his vengeance, which he took with relish. I want my father back, you son of a- All of which leads to another House of Love top tip. When you agree to a price with a merchant, stick with it. It's just good manners. Weren't you paying attention? Papa Montoya made a sword for Rugen. Rugen decided that he only wanted to pay a tenth as much for it. Then he took the sword, killed Papa Montoya with it. Inigo challenged him then, as a kid. And again, 20 years later, in the sequence that you've just seen. Where he had a lot more success than the first attempt. And Westley managed to reach his love. And bluff the fool Humperdinck into retreat. And so our heroes escape the castle on four white horses. And they all lived happily. For a while at least. But that's another story. Anyway, that is the tale of the Princess Bride. And I just have to put this movie into my house of love. Director Rob Reiner brings us a legendary film and not just in the fantasy setting. I admit that sometimes I have used family film as a backhanded compliment, though very lightly on compliment and heavy on the backhand. But this movie is a brilliant family film, filled with twists and turns, high politics and high adventure, romance and suspense. Carrie Elwes is cheeky and charming as the dashing hero Wesley, moral and spiritual centre of the movie. Mandy Patinkin's legendary turn as Inigo Montoya channels the spirit of Zorro himself, and even Andre the Giant, who was legendarily stricken in his lifetime, turns in somewhat of a performance here. And the villains! Christopher Guest's Count Rugen, a sadistic sneering snake of a man, is eminently hateable, as is Chris Sarandon's warmongering, scheming, cowardly Prince Humperdinck. And let's not forget, the majority of the British accents in this movie are either perfect or near enough that it makes no difference. With the exception of Chris Sarandon, Longo's galore. It isn't all good news though. While the movie is light on hard fantasy, the fire swamp does include some practical effects, which haven't aged all that well. And when the score, written by Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits, collapses into synth faux orchestral, it does sound very cheap. But if you imagine what a full orchestra would sound like, then you can see what he was aiming for, which is a love letter to the classic Saturday morning serials of old. And in the legendary romance and masterful fencing, one can see the echoes of Errol Flynn and Buster Crab and all of the action men of Golden Age Hollywood, even if you've never seen a second of them in action. So put aside your mobile phone, power down your laptop, and if you're going to do something with your console, load up the movie app, because The Princess Bride may be so much more than a 94 minute placator for sick kiddies, but it certainly don't hurt for that either. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Or if you want to be extra awesome, check out my Patreon and Kofi links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey, and hey, Good days and great entertainment, as you wish. So long, folks.